Uh, you've talked pretty publicly uh, about negative thoughts and, and, and mentioned it, or alluded to it a couple of times as we've been talking. So I think it's fair to ask and, and just tell me it's not and I'll cut this out like it never happened uh, if, if it's not. Um, but I'm, I'm with you as, a, as a, a child and as a teenager. As a child, I had an overinflated uh, opinion of my own worth, but certainly into, uh, into adolescence. A big part of that was discovering, oh, I must be the worst human that ever lived, and then trying to figure out somewhere in between those those two extremes. Um, and your characters, um, certainly uh, Marisol, and I know some of your other characters, have to deal with their negative thoughts. And then you are in, engaging in creative endeavors every day. You've got to have negative thoughts still uh, haunting around, saying it's 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 never going to be as good as it was before. Or, or maybe they're saying something completely opposite. I won't give those voices bad ideas, whatever they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> how do you overcome those um, and, and get them out of your way? And how did you do that when you were younger as well? That's a, that's a really great question. So um, when I was younger, I don't, to be honest, when I was younger, books, you know, people say this a lot, but it really is true for me. Books really saved my life and writing saved my life. Um and I had this big dream that I was going to be a writer one day and I was going to be published. And and I kind of wore that dream as a blanket, you know, whenever I would get depressed. I suffered from uh, depression almost my whole life. Um, I would think, you know, one day none of this will matter because I'm going to be a writer and my dreams are going to come true. And I kind of hung my my hat on that dream. And as I got older and you know, and the dream actually came true. Then there's a whole new slew of, of, of problems in that, oh, my dream came true. And then you have the negative thoughts of, oh, um, am I going to live up to people's expectations? Um, do I deserve all these wonderful things that are happening? Um, you know, so on and so forth, endless, endlessly. And you know, for me, you know, and I've, I, I try to talk a lot about imposter syndrome because I don't think it's something that writers talk enough about. And one thing that I've learned, you know, of course, I won the Newbery Medal in 2018, and a lot of people would consider that an, an apex, right? Like, like at the summit of of accomplishment in the world of children's oh, literature. It was immediately followed by a Newbery honor. <laughs> 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 yeah, so now I'm good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and, you know, obviously, um, it's a great, a tremendous honor and it's life changing. But um, there's there's always going to be, I, I say all this to say that no matter how successful you are, um, there's always another mountain that's a little bit higher that you can climb. And I think that the key is to use that to motivate you to do better to try to keep things in perspective instead of always instead of allowing it to drag you down for example okay um if you know you win the newberry medal okay well uh katie camillo's won two newberry medals and a newberry honor and this author has won four has been recognized four times and this author is on the new york times bestseller list for four years running and this author has had three books made into movies. I mean, there's always someone out there who is accomplishing more and seems to be doing it better. So I, I say all that to say that if you fall into the comparison game, it's a game you'll never win. You cannot win the game. So what I try to do is, is keep it in perspective and think about what I said earlier in the hour, which was my dream was to write books that people connected with for different reasons and that spoke to people. And that may be five people, it could be 500 people, it could be 500,000 people, no matter what the number is. The important thing is, that's the important thing at the core. So I try to keep things in perspective and I try to use all the self-doubt to just propel me, you know, to motivate me to do better. Okay, well, if I don't like what I did in this book, Maybe I'll try something new in this book. Maybe I'll try writing, um, like I said, a science fiction or something. You know, like always trying to do better and evolve. And I think that helps quell some of those those whispers of self doubt. You know, because you're always striving to do better while also recognizing that 
you'll probably never be the best because it's an arbitrary title anyway. Well, for all those writers listening, just know uh, that even if you manage to bury all of your contemporaries in, in the dirt, uh, you will not top William Shakespeare. They <laughs> he's got the There's always someone doing better. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's entirely possible he has no idea. <laughs> that is absolutely entirely possible, yes. <laughs>